Hello everyone! Kumusta kayo guys? How are you? In this video, we will review all the things that you need for your check-in for your flight to the Philippines. Now, there have been changes and it can be overwhelming. So in this video, we'll make sure that everyone is on the same page. All of us will be able to travel smoothly. No unnecessary surprises. So we are prepared travelers. So let's start with the negative test result requirement. Yes, you need to get tested before you fly to the Philippines. You need to show a negative test result. So it can either be an RT-PCR taken 48 hours before departure or a rapid antigen test taken within 24 hours before departure. So if you are taking RT-PCR, it can be more expensive, but it's give you, it gives you more allowance now because you can get this test 48 hours before departure or within two days before departure. So for example, if your flight departure is on May 10, 10.30 a.m., you can get tested RT-PCR as early as May 8, 10.30 a.m., pwede ding May 9, as long as you are within 48 hours. Okay, May 8, 10.30 a.m., on or after. I wouldn't recommend doing it exactly 48 hours much better let's say 45 hours before the flight or 30 hours before the flight no please make sure that the lab will be able to release your result before your check-in because airline will ask for that so just ask your lab when are you going to be able to release my result before you book with them okay 48 hours for RT-PCR, not necessarily 48, it can either be 30 hours, 24 hours, basta as long as it's not more than 48 hours, okay? Next is for rapid antigen test, this is taken within 24 hours before departure. So for example, if your flight is on May 10, 10.30 a.m., you can have your rapid antigen test anytime on or after May 9, 10.30 a.m. So, sakto po, 24 hours. Pwede then you can have the antigen test few hours before your flight, 5 hours, 12 hours, 18 hours, as long as it is within 24 hours before the flight departure, okay? Within po yan, ha? Within. And when you are counting the basis of your testing on when you should get tested, only consider departure time. I get so many questions from travelers. Oh, my arrival is this. When should I get tested? Please, guys, ignore arrival time. That will only confuse you. <coughs> Our basis is only departure. For example, this flight, Los Angeles to Singapore to Manila, you will get tested May 10, diba? May 10, 10.30 a.m. your flight. So, for example, if it's RT-PCR, May 8. If it's um, antigen, May 9. Oh, oh. As long as within the valid hours. 48 hours for RT-PCR, antigen 24 hours. Uh, I'm, I want to show you a very simple calculation. Uh, for example, departure is uh, May 12. May 12, 6 a.m. Kung if you want RT-PCR test, just minus 2. May 12 minus 2, edi May 10, di ba? Minus 2. And then, 6 a.m. O anytime on or after. Yan. Pwede ka na magpa-RT-PCR. If you want to take antigen, antigen test, departure is May 12 minus 1. May 11. 6 a.m. O. On or after. Mas mabuti kung after na ha. Huwag niyong isakto. Don't do it exactly 24 hours or 48 hours. Okay? Minus 1, minus 2. Ganun lang po. Pag RT-PCR, minus 2. <laughs> Pag antigen, minus 1 arrival date. Ay, uh, departure date. Sorry, sorry. Yan? Okay. I want to share the experience of an OFW. It's very sad because... Let me share. I flew to the Philippines on May 2 as a vacationing OFW. I had all the requirements ready. As per the Philippine Embassy in Singapore, off-site test is allowed and so I have taken virtually supervised test and Ministry of Health in Singapore have issued the certificate that I was negative but upon arrival to the Philippines, the Bureau of Quarantine denied a quarantine-free travel to me. 
This is very stupid rules because they wouldn't accept my offsite test and there should be a upon arrival test, but no, he was sent to quarantine. He took a supervised test. He did the test by himself, you know, and then somebody was supervising him. Please, guys, avoid that kind of testing because according to the IATF, antigen tests is accepted as long as they are within 24 hours of departure and if they are administered by a healthcare professional not by yourself and if you're doing it by yourself the certificate should not mention that you did it by yourself <laughs> you know what i'm talking about yeah it should not mention that you did the test by yourself because if that's the case you will really end up in quarantine it should be administered by a healthcare professional yeah, and unfortunately, this OFW only had seven days of vacation in the Philippines and he had to spend the six to five days in the quarantine hotel. <sighs> yeah, guys, so please learn from this experience of our kababayan. Do not avoid yung certificate that mentions um, off-site testing or um, self-home test kit. No. That's you will end up in quarantine in that. Now for the negative test result requirement, if you have kids traveling with you who are below three years old, one, two, uh, yan, hindi po exempted. Babies are exempted. They don't have to get tested exempted as long as they have no symptoms. While three years old above three, actually po three years old above, sasabihin ko kasi minsan din require ang three years old. Depends on the interpretation of the airline. So three years old above, must show a negative test result, either antigen or RT-PCR. And then one health pass. <laughs> this was the talk of the whole travelers, many travelers for, for this week, trending one health pass because of the stupid updates and then it's improved. Okay, onehealthpass.com.ph, do this within two days before your departure or once your negative test result is ready. Once you receive your negative test result, go ahead and register to onehealthpass.com.ph. Again, this is the only official government website, onehealthpass.com.ph. There are still many travelers who fall victims of websites that charge people $65, $100, $90. No, 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 guys. One Health Pass is free. Just go to the official government website. And then whether you receive a barcode or a QR code, that is good enough. That is accepted. You're good to go. Don't stress. If you have a barcode, you're good to go. If you have a QR code, you're good to go. Okay. <laughs> now on the vaccination requirement, Again, if you're fully vaccinated, no quarantine upon arrival as long as you have a valid test result and a fully vaccinated ka. To be considered fully vaccinated, you must have finished your primary dose. So for example, two shots of Pfizer, two doses of Moderna or two doses of AstraZeneca or Sinopharm or Sinovac. If you got one shot of J&J, &J, that's good enough. You're considered fully vaccinated. And 14 days must have passed before you arrive in the Philippines since receiving the second dose or single shot of J&J. &J. Dapat 14 days gap. Now, booster shot is not yet required. If you were vaccinated 2020, that is still accepted. There's no expiration. While for the unvaccinated, partially vaccinated, or those without proof of vaccination, there is quarantine. That is, you will be tested on the fifth day. For nano FWs, you need to book five nights in the quarantine hotel. I made a, a guide for unvaccinated. I'll put the link in the comment section. Now, upon arrival in your home, you just follow what the LGU says, the local government. Again, unvaccinated will quarantine in the hotel. Who will quarantine in the hotel upon arrival? Unvaccinated and partially vaccinated adult Filipinos or travelers. Those with expired or invalid test result, just like that OFW. Those with COVID symptoms, if you have fever, cough, they will be able to detect that. Please don't travel if you're sick. Next, if, uh, next up is those with unacceptable vaccination proof. 
unvaccinated minors 11 years old and below will just follow the protocols of their parents so if you're traveling with fully vaccinated parents no quarantine while unvaccinated 12 to 17 years old filipinos may end up in quarantine po it would depend on the uh dependent talaga sa boq personnel that is in the airport Ito yung sinasabi na merong quarantine if unvaccinated Filipino na 12 to 17 years old. But I've seen inconsistencies in their rules. So it would always depend na lang on whoever is assigned at the airport. I'm sorry to hear, I'm sorry to say na medyo confusing. But based on experience, based on the evidences of our travelers, it always depends kung sino naka-assign sa airport. Anyways... Yun guys, uh, 12 to 17 years old, much better kung fully vaccinated. While for foreign nationals, IATF says no vaccine, no entry. If you are 12 years old and above, 11 years old and below are exempted. Foreign nationals, please be fully vaccinated to enter and to avoid quarantine. However, there are still inconsistencies on this matter. Abab Kababayan shared this to us. Foreign spouse traveled with Filipina. The spouse was unvaccinated, still able to enter. And in fact, BOQ and Cebu says that they are accepting unvaccinated foreigners. It's very confusing. I know if you are unvaccinated, who is very keen on traveling to the Philippines, please make all the inquiries that you need to do boq immigration and airlines you all will be taking a risk but uh yeah <laughs> sorry to give you such um confusing information i am also confused myself because different government agencies are telling these different things if you are an unvaccinated foreign spouse traveling with your filipina spouse call your airlines if they didn't if they will allow you if they do then go ahead fly to the philippines but expect quarantine anyways let's go on the travel insurance requirement some travelers are still asking about this are we required travel insurance the travel insurance requirement is, um, makes that says that you need to have a thirty-five thousand dollars coverage for covid not necessarily $35,000 in your pocket or in your bank, but your insurer should cover your expenses for COVID up to $35,000. That's what it says. So who is required to have insurance? Foreign tourist entering visa-free, for example, an American foreigner entering the Philippines. No family in the Philippines, just a plain tourist. 9A visa holders, they need insurance. Who is exempted? Filipinos don't need insurance. Balikbayans, former Filipinos and their spouse and children don't need insurance. Foreign spouse and children of Filipinos, no need for insurance. Foreigners holding a visa except 9A visa don't need insurance. These people don't need insurance to travel to the Philippines. Yan, balik bayans, hindi kailangan, okay? Paulit-ulit na po yan. Hindi kailangan ng insurance ng mga former Filipinos at ng spouse and anak nyo po. So, let's go and checklist, le review the check-in requirements. For Filipinos, negative test result, either RT-PCR or antigen, one health pass QR code or barcode, vaccination card or certificate, kahit anong bansa, tatanggapin. Kung unvaccinated na no OFW, kailangan mag-book sa hotel quarantine ng 5 nights. Kung OFW, libre pa rin ng gobyerno ang inyong quarantine kung unvaccinated kayo. Basta OFW. Dual Filipino citizens, if you don't have a Philippine passport, please bring your certificate of retention or reacquisition of Philippine citizenship or identification certificate, either of the two. Bring your certificate ng dual citizenship kung wala kayong Philippine passport, okay? And then for former Filipinos, foreign spouse, and children of Filipinos or former Filipinos traveling together, negative test result, passport should be more than six months valid upon entry, your vaccination proof, and one health pass QR code or barcode. It's basically three things. Just make sure that your passport is more than six months valid. We have travelers who were denied boarding because their passport was not six months valid or more. Six months or more valid, okay? Double check your passport.
And then, former Filipinos po, expired Philippine passport or birth certificate. I know many says, hindi naman hinanap, but it's always best to have it. Okay? If you have it, bring it. While for your spouse, a marriage certificate, for the child, birth certificate, I know many can testify, it was not asked. Nobody asked for it, but if you have it, bring it, please. While for foreign tourists, entry requirements, a negative test result, RT-PCR or antigen test, it's always your choice. Passport should be more than six months valid, vaccination proof, travel insurance, exit ticket of not more than 30 days if you're uh, entering visa-free. For example, an American tourist, a Canadian tourist, you must show a ticket that you are leaving the Philippines not more than 30 days because you don't have a visa. Therefore, you must show proof that you will not overstay on your visa. Um, you can rent a ticket if you want to stay longer. I'll put the link in the description box. For just $14, you can satisfy this requirement. Next up, One Health Pass QR code or barcode. Then for foreigners holding a visa except 9A, a negative test result, passport should be more than six months valid upon entry, an accepted vaccination proof, one help pass QR code or barcode. And that's really it, guys. I hope this video gave you an idea. It did not confuse you, but helped you. And if it did, leave a like on the video. Share this to your kababayans who want to travel to the Philippines. We are very relaxed. Some people are very worried that after the election, there's a lockdown. No, there's no sign of lockdown. Our cases are very low. Wala, po, wala pong sign na ganern. Trust me, I live here. <laughs> I've been living here since last year. I moved here. And um, there's no lockdown right now. Cases are low. Um, the Philippines e a tourism industry is thriving. Yeah, and people are traveling. So do not worry. If you are coming here just for a vacation, I'm 100% sure you will enjoy it. <laughs> so I'll see you with another travel update. Stay safe and God bless you all. Bye.